So the second release of the Happy Chocolate Project is a bar that we're really excited to, um, to announce. And we're going to be releasing it on May 11th with a release party. And then the next day, um, we'll be uh, releasing it to the public at large. So the, the downtown Palo Alto Farmers Market, which you know we're located across the street from, will be starting up. It's a seasonal market, and that's going to be the first day of the market. So we're really excited to release this, this new bar. Um, this, this bar, um, I feel, is something that has long time been very close to my heart. Um, I've been nibbling on Rio Caribe for a few years now. It's been sort of my one of my um, go-to bars during the day when I take a break from work and nip over to the garage to nibble on some chocolate. And so <clears throat> when we started talking, Alan, about um, having you uh, do a special bar for us, it seemed like you know it had Rio Caribe made sense for so many reasons. It's a delicious bar. Um, so uh, I, I actually want to get you to talk about this bar because really all I did was sort of throw together a, an idea of an existing bar with a few extra things added to it. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about your um, the, the the difference between the sort of classic Rio Caribe, which which most people know, and this new bar that has Rio Caribe nibs sprinkled on the back as well as some sea salt. Um, so I'll just do a little visual of the bar. So this is going to be the new bar that we release. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit about your thoughts and of, of the flavor differences and, and how it shines. Okay. Um, so as you know, before I released the, the original Rio Caribe, I had four Madagascar-based chocolate bars, and, and that's all that I had. Um, and what really enticed me about the Rio Caribe at the time, and still does, is how different the flavor profile is from the Madagascar. So whereas the Madagascar, um, you know, might have a, uh, a very mild, um, uh, sort of amorphous and nutty quality. Um, it, it's mostly a, a bright, uh, fruity, berry and citrus-like chocolate bar. Uh, it's got complexity, but uh, within that complexity, it, it, it's, it seems to be moving mostly in one direction, and that's in this sort of bright, juicy, fruity, citrusy direction. The Rio Caribe, on the other hand, um, it's earthy, it, I taste coffee, uh, I taste walnuts uh, in that chocolate. Uh, the, the fruit in this chocolate is more to me like dried fruit, like dried apricots or dried cherries. Um, and there's even a slight kind of lactic acid quality that, that helps me to kind of think or reminds me of uh, green olives and the chocolate. And so it's incredibly different from the Madagascar. And, and so it, it was delicious, but it also enticed me in that I could put out a new product um, that really couldn't be compared so much to the Madagascar as much as contrasted with it. Um, what do you mean by lactic, by the way? Um, um, so you know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the flavors that you get in fermentation are, are coming from uh, bacteria, and one of those is kind of like a lactic acid quality, just generally something that you would find in, in cheeses and some um, sort of wild vegetable fermentations and olive fermentations. Um, it's you know, it's, it's not vinegar, which would be acetic acid, and that certainly exists in cacao to some degree, but it's, it's, and it's not aromatic, it's not a volatile acid, so it's something you really only taste, it's really only happening once it's in your mouth, you can't smell it. Um, and so I think, you know, there are a number of different flavor compounds, you know, some slightly vegetal ones that, that also sort of uh, work to remind me of green olive. Um, it's it's hard to it's hard to explain sometimes. That it you know the because of the fermentation process um, that happens to cacao, you know it's it's very very complex in terms of all the different flavor compounds that you can find in the chocolate. It, it varies from from origin to origin and even from fermentation to fermentation to some extent. Uh, so. There, there are interesting fermentation-related flavor notes 
uh, including that lactic acid that remind me of the, the green olive. So in talking about the complexity of fermentation, it just comes up for me. I've read um, that uh, because of this fermentation and because, um, well, just comparing cacao to wine, you know, there's this understanding by a lot of people that, you know, wine has all these complexities and people have sort of developed a vocabulary around talking about wine. And uh, I often see when people come and do tastings, they, they struggle, they wonder, well, how do we talk about chocolate? And um, it seems that the, I've, I've read in a few places that cacao in, is actually much more complex than wine in terms of the kinds of compounds and flavors and aromas that are found in, in chocolate. Is that true? Uh, I believe that is true. And, and not just because of the fermentation, you know, uh, I think it's partly because of the fermentation because most of the wine that we're drinking these days is fermented using a, one particular strain of yeast, mm -hmm. uh, whereas cacao, is it's a wild fermentation. So you've got a number of different wild strains of yeast and a number of different strains of bacteria, and they're all sort of doing their, their magic to ferment uh, the pulp on the outside of the cacao. Um, so you get all kinds of complexity in the flavor that way, but also cacao is, a, uh, is roasted prior to the chocolate being made, and that roasting adds an additional layer of complexity to the flavor profile that you don't get in wine. Um, so I think uh, just in terms of, of the number of flavor compounds, uh, chocolate is more complex. It doesn't necessarily mean that humans can perceive it as being more complex, which right. is a totally different issue, I think. Um, I think I think I would be hard pressed to taste and point out 250 or 300 specific flavor compounds in the chocolate. Um, you know, probably I'm only focusing on a few at, at a time, or um, you know, several of them may give me the perception of one particular type of fruit, and that's really what I'm perceiving. Uh, not the individual compound, but but I think just numerically speaking, uh, chocolate is more complex. Did you, um, that reminds me what you're saying of um, an article that came out that was sort of talking about, you know, the complexity and all the different compounds, but how they sort of distilled down to a few basic things. And the, the flavors that I remember reading that I just thought were kind of humorous, it was like cabbage, meat, sweat, something like that. It was that, that those are sort of the, the, the culmination of a bunch of compounds that we then recognize as X or Y. Um, right. Yeah. Um, so back to the Rio Caribe with nibs and salt. I'm curious, so, you know, when you experimented, I know you did a lot of experimentation around how to, you know, um, put on these nibs and figure out how the salt, how to apply the salt in a way that was going to be consistent and uniform and, and just the right amount. So tell me about how you feel the nibs and the salt um, sort of change this bar and, 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 and affect the flavors and what it brings out. So the interesting thing about um, if you're making chocolate from some particular nibs, that chocolate tastes, th though you can tell that there's a relationship between the two, um, th if you taste them separately, they taste very different. So you know, going back to the Madagascar, which is very bright in its chocolate form, uh, when you eat the nibs by themselves, they don't taste nearly as acidic, uh, and they taste far more nutty. And the Rio Caribe is similar in that sense. Um, it, it has a lower amount of uh, acid, I think, overall. So when you taste the chocolate, you know, you'll get those dried fruit flavors that are supported by a certain uh, quantity of acids, you know, whether it's uh, the lactic acid or a little acetic acid or malic acid, you know, various things created during the fermentation or that, uh, you know, in the case of the malic acid that may be naturally occurring in the pulp, um, or citric acid, for example. Um, there, there's not a lot in the chocolate as it is, but there's some. Um, but when you eat the nibs, it, it's really almost not evident at all. So you get the nuttiness, you get, um, to me, the, the walnuts really come through in the Rio nets. And then uh, the application of just a little bit of salt, I think, plays into that um, because, you know, most of us are used to eating nuts that have been salted. Mm -hmm. So um, 
the Rio nibs, which are particularly nutty and roasty, coffee-like, um, with that salt, I think it really, really helps to support that quality. And so then applying them to the chocolate, um, you know, I feel like you get a contrast, whereas the chocolate by itself has the nutty characteristics. Once you're tasting uh, the nibs as incredibly nutty, all of a sudden the chocolate doesn't seem quite as nutty anymore. I'm using the word nutty a lot, but anyway. Um, so some of the other flavors that, that normally are there, but are not as obvious, for example, the dried fruit, um, and I think the, the, the green olive, I think they tend to come through a little more in the chocolate uh, portion um, because of the contrast with what's really being perceived as, as quite um, you know, crunchy, roasty, nutty quality to the nibs. And that's something that happens in the inevitable bar with the Madagascar as well. Um, and that's, it's, it's something that I think has made the inevitable um, such an amazing bar is, is that you have similar flavor compounds being perceived in very different ways because of the texture. And then that textural contrast um, takes the complexity out into another realm altogether. And I think that those two things are happening exactly the same way with the, the Rio Caribe and Nip Bar. Uh, of course, the salt is shifting things a little bit more to the, the nutty side than it does with the inevitable. Right. So <clears throat> um, a lot of my, you know, regulars who come to the garage and new people who come into the garage regularly ask me, you know, oh, you know, what do you have that's salty? People seem to be very excited these days about the combination of, you know, chocolate and the, the sweet side with, with more of the savory. And so um, I know that I know that the nibbleable bar and bars that you sprinkle nibs on the back of are very labor intensive and, and and difficult to make. And so I'm really grateful that you agreed to make this bar for us, and we're really excited um, to release this as part of the Happy Chocolate Project through the the Chocolate Garage. So thank you so much for making it. I know that um, uh, it, it's a it's a delicious bar, but I know that it takes a lot of work to to create, right? Well. I it's been my pleasure, first of all. It, it, it's, a, it's a delicious bar, um, so I'm glad that we put the effort into it to create it. And, and it did take a decent amount of labor um, uh, to create it, but you know, it's not just, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's not just something that we did and we said, like, yeah, that's a pretty good bar. Um, you know, all the employees who are involved in making it happen um, bought some afterwards, which is, is um, a great sign, you know, they, they're they sitting there, you know, shaking nibs and salt on bars all day long, and by the end of the day, their arms feel like they're going to fall off, and yet they want to buy, you know, uh, a number of bars to take home and eat, so that's that's a great sign that, uh, you know, we're doing something that's delicious and that, that, you know, everyone has pride in, despite the work that had to go into it. That's fantastic. I'm really excited to release it to the folks here. Um, and I'm also excited, I know that we've talked about how, you know, in making these bars, there's a lot of bars that don't quite make the quality cutoff. And so there's a lot of sort of rejects that I'm really looking forward to tasting as well, because I hear there's some, I have a bit of a saltier side palate. I like things to be really salty. So I'm looking forward to tasting all those sort of quote unquote rejects um, as well. I think they'll probably be my, uh, you know, favorite favorite bars even though they're sort of they didn't quite meet your quality standards <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I, I, the, you know they're all delicious it's not uh, you know even the rejects yeah none of our rejects are rejects in the sense that they're that they don't taste good but they're just um, you know there's just something something a little different than than the rest of the batch so yeah some of them have a little more salt or they're a little short on nibs or maybe they're underweight something like that so It'll, you know, add a little bit of interest. People can taste uh, some of the different, you know, potential iterations of, uh, you know, how to mix the, the, the base chocolate and the nibs and the salt together. That's a great idea, actually. I could use those as sort of educational to see how, you know, the process of creating a new bar. In any case, we're really looking forward to tasting them, and I plan to um, collect some video of people tasting the, the bars um, for the first time, and so we'll post those here as well at a later date once we've released the bar. Great. Looking forward to hopefully many future collaborations and new bars that uh, 
that I, we we uh, bring to the world. Mostly that means you'll be doing all the work, but <laughs> and all of the master blending. But um, looking forward to many more bars in our future. Looking forward to it as well.